Yeah, are we good? Okay, so we're back. It's absolutely freezing today. I think it's minus one, minus two, something like that. Don't start that so please, Simon, while I'm videoing. Okay, all right, so I've had a call from somebody on YouTube, not a call, but says that I need to introduce the team. This is Adam. Adam? Hi. He's been here how many months, Adam? Eight. I've, I've keep trying to sack him, but he's still here. <laughs> this is Michael, also known as Multitool. Why are you well. called Multitool, Michael? Because he says if he was a tool, he would be a multi-tool. Yeah. We think he would be a dildo, though, but there you go. And this is Simon. Simon is accident prone and falls over a lot. <laughs> Don't you, Simon? Yep. Also, his van doesn't start on a regular basis. And this is John. <laughs> See how he's posing for the camera there? John, John does some videography. Well, he does a lot of videography and photography. That's why he's posing. You see his chin is forward, so that the double, sign of a double, double chin, chin has gone. Not Look. double chin. So if you're a lady or a gentleman with a big turkey neck chin, maybe you want to step forward. John's been here from the start. We had a year apart, didn't we, John, where we fell out, but we sorted out our differences now, so we're back. So that's all the team, apart from Amy and Sean, who have both got... Yeah, well, Amy's got COVID. Has Sean got COVID? Yeah. Near enough. Sean's near enough got COVID as well, but they'll all be back on Monday, so I'll introduce you to them as well. Thank you. So what we're going to do now today, we're going to get the noggins in these walls. I don't know why Adam's putting the string line that I put halfway along the wall, please, Adam. 900 from top. Put it halfway along the wall. Halfway. 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 We did it 900, Yeah, but... No, no, no. No, no, no. That was in a different height wall. Yeah, no. Right, halfway, please, yeah. Well, okay. Too far, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. 1200. Too no, far. But it's 50 mil. It's 450 wide. No, 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 no. 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 But we cut it that way, don't we? Right. Yeah, you, no, you want so the so noggin so halfway so on the wall? Shall I cut this video? No, no, no. So that'd be 900. Right, halfway on the wall, please. I want this on video. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> okay, so Adam's going to put the noggins halfway along the wall. I don't know if he's going to step them yet or keep them in line. Maybe multi tool will start at one side and do a different way, and Adam will start at one side and do it this way, and they'll meet in the middle. And we're also going to put the roof on. We're going to use 5B2 C16 normally, but because um, we've using a different timber yard because I forgot I left it at home, we're using C24, which is just a grade of wood. It's a better grade of wood, uh, but there is absolutely no need. C16 is absolutely fine. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the roof on. We're going to use 400 spacings on the roof. If John steps back there, he'll be able to see this detail here. What we did, we put the steel in, we put these timbers in and we've had to build another frame because this roof and this building is bigger than normal, what we normally do. The customer's applied for planning permission, he wants it to be a gym. He's quite a tall fellow so he needs the extra height as well. So that's why we create that ladder up there and we will also be able to put our roof timbers on there and fix successfully to that without the need for upside down joist hangers. So we're going to put the roof to joists on now, so the 5 by 2 so what we know... John, what's the overhang, mate? 295? So the overhang is 295, so we'll put 295 to the edge of the OSB there. That distance there is 295, and then by the time we've got our end trimmer on the end, that will allow us to put a 300mm rib soffit on there without having to cut it down. So what we're going to do, um, because... because it's built on the garage base um, and he wants it sort of like parallel with the house so we give him a little bit more than what he wanted it's slightly out of square so what we're going to do is going to put them all all the roof joists on hang them all over at the back i'm going to hang them over at the back and then we'll get them all level not level we'll get them all in line at the front with a string line and then what i'll do is i'll run around the back with a chainsaw and chop them all off to um, make sure they're in line there as well so what we'll do we'll put this one on there we'll put one on at that side over there i'll put a string line between them both and then we'll put all these roof joists on in line with the string line um, and i'll show you how we're going to fix them as well so i put i put a timber in at the end there and i put one in this and you can see the string line that's pulled off the front there. It's nice and tight. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fix all these roof joists. Um, I'm going to put 400 spacer in it and we're going to fix them all. And what I'm also going to do is look for the crown in the timber, um, which basically, let me just turn around up here. Basically, it's, if you look at that timber there, so sometimes when the timber comes to exaggerate, it'll have a bend in it like that. And you want the bend up so that, because if all the bends are down, then obviously the weight of the roof in time it's going to sag down more and also you get pulled in the water so you want to put your crown up if that makes sense um so what we're going to do we're going to nail it with these with this um milwaukee nail gun john's on the pass load you can see how spiked the first one in there it's dead in line with that side wall which is what we want and then we're going to go along with 400 spacers and fit them all to the roof 
Right, I've dropped back onto iPhone to video this. Uh, it's a little bit safer, so the sound quality won't be as good. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to drop our front trimmer on the front there. Um, the 4.8, obviously the building's bigger than that, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to join it halfway on one of these timbers, let it fly over there, let it go too long over there. I'll then put another piece on there, let that one overfly, and then we'll do the same on the back. Three nails in the front of each one. So that's the first one on there. You can see, um, just to see there, I've just half lapped it onto that timber there. Um, what I've done there, we've let that fly over loads there, so that'll carry the side. What we're going to do now, we're going to put another little piece on over there, let that fly over, and then we'll jump onto the back. What we've done, we've pinned the line. Uh, I don't know if you can see the line, but uh, do, there we go. See the blue line? Pin the line. Now I'm going to square the line up. Uh, like I said, this building's running slightly out, but what we're trying to do is give the customer more um, than he's actually paid for. So what, what we'll do, we're going to... Um, keep it tight to this boundary but then also parallel run it there where the old concrete pad was which is why the buildings run slightly like that um so what we'll do now obviously you can't cut all these timbers to one thing because it obviously increases size as we get to that end of the building that's why we put a string line on there um and what we'll do now we'll get the chainsaw and we'll whip them off That's the quickest way to do it So there you go, that's the side trimmers are on now, so the ends there just won't trim it off there. I'll whip them off with chainsaw. What we're going to do now is put a series of noggins in here, which is going to support this wall. Um, so we know, we know that gap there is 180. Is it 180, that gap, John, or 160? Yeah, 180. 180. So what we've done, we've already cut five noggins at 180. 180? Yeah, 180. Um, and then what we'll do, I'll show you now what we'll do is, can you see that gap that runs up there? So what we need to do is infill that gap so that the plastic board's got something to fix there. Also have a double purpose then as well. It will tie that first, well the second rafter, it will tie it in line with the wall and also tie it to the wall and then we can put our noggins all the way along, our real bum 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 bum, all the way along. And also the noggins across there will be then supported into this one as well. It will be fixed up through there. So we'll put a 500 in there, we'll put a noggin there, we'll fix the noggin into the 500, we'll fix the noggin into the wall, and then we'll fix the roof rafter into the noggin, so everything's tied into everything else. You can see there, there are the cross noggins which are all in the end timber. They're then supported off the timbers we've fixed there, which are fixed to the wall, which will carry the plasterboard, which are also fixed through the joist there. So this full section of wall, roof rather here is now fixed to the wall so we can now nog in off there nog in off there and we're not going to push it that way so it's actually fixed to the wall and if adam will show you now there we go so what what happens is i'm going to drop a timber down like that there adam's going to make sure it's flush with that wall there so he'll then screw through under there which will then fix that timber to that wall giving some giving us somewhere to plaster board i will then fix through there um, which will then fix the roof rafter to the wall and then we will also then put another 180 noggin in across there which will then carry the outside timber so everything's tied into everything else and also you've got a plasterboard finish there as well. There you go, that's that full side trimmed out. We've got us, um, we've got all those noggins in, we're supported off the wall, we're braced to the first rafter as well. So what we can do then, I'm going to just cut these little off cuts off there with chainsaw and then we're going to put two rows of noggins straight down the middle and then we'll perform the same procedure on the end over there and then put the last two noggins in. So there you go, that's the full roof all knocking down. Uh, we've put the front trimmers on top. We've got a rake from front to back. There's 75 mil in that, so all the water will run this way. Drop down there into a gutter, down, down pipe, and we're going to feed that into the drain as well. We've done the side trimmers. I've showed you the noggins going in the middle. I've showed you how to do the side trimmers for the plasterboard. Um, so there you go, that's full roof. Uh, finish. So we put us rows and noggins in as well. So this is back wall, this is side wall. So if you can see there, there's nothing there to fix the plasterboard to, whereas there is there. So that plasterboard will screw nicely to that, but there's nothing there. So that plasterboard there, if you don't fix it, it will crack. So what you need to do then is put some more uprights in. What we're going to do, we're going to drop that in there like that. We're going to fix it through there, and then when that plasterboard goes across there, it can then fix to that, and it's solid. You need to screw these. If you nail them, it'll push them off. They'll be on the piss like that, and at angles, and you won't get a good finish on your plasterboard. So what we're going to do, we're going to screw through there, fix them to there, and then that means that we can plasterboard there, we can plasterboard there. You may struggle to get your insulation behind there, so what we'll do, we'll fill that cavity tight with rock wool, and then that will be rigid fold insulation there. So that's your corner detail for your plasterboarding.
So we've finished the roof. The guys have been putting this 50 mil insulation in the wall. 50 is plenty for the wall. It's foil backed. If you're using foil backed insulation, then 50 is enough. 100 in the ceiling, 100 in the floor. What the insulation needs to do, we use a 4 by 2 CLS timber floor. The insulation needs to be tightly fit and it needs to be pushed back all the way because if you don't, you see how there's no air gap there so then it'll be the same roof scenario as a warm and cold roof you'll have air there which will condensate when the outside of that building gets cold so that wants to be pushed all the way back there'll then be a bit of vapour barrier there then there'll be plasterboard that air there will be ambient temperature so when they're cut, they want to be cut tight they want to be fit back Nice and snug like that. If you've got any gaps like that, we're going to fill them with expanding foam. Aren't we, Adam? Aren't we, Adam? Yes. Yes. Um, so any gaps will be filled. And then that there will be insulated enough for the wall. And like I say, they the barrier plasterboard. Air there, ambient temperature. Yeah. Right, that's what's done for today. Um, so basically, we've got as far up now the walls are in, all the insulation's in the walls. Um, it's supposed to snow, rain, whatever, tomorrow. So I'm not sure if we'll get the roof on. The boards are up on the roof ready to go. I've showed you how to do the roof, showed you how to do the walls. They've insulated all the walls with 50 mil. You can see how tight they've got it. It's a good tight fit. It's pushed right back to the OSB. We've got our noggins in. We've got our side trimmers in for our plaster boards as well. And you can see that they've formed it where they've not been as tight as what we would have liked on the insulation. But obviously the foam does a good job as well. I've also, we'll leave these props in because once you start doing that roof, until that roof covering's on, you're still going to get lateral movement in the building whilst you're up there working on it. So we'll leave these props in. But apart from that, it's a proper solid build. You're not going to get a better build anywhere in the country. I've said it time and time again because nobody else is building to this standard. With this amount of wood and fixings, there's nobody else doing it. They're just flying it up. Um, so that's it. If you'd like to like, subscribe, follow, and leave a comment, that'd be good as well. And hopefully we'll see you here tomorrow. Right, job. Who wants a job? We are taking on. Um, we've had loads of inquiries about people who want to come and work here, and then they don't turn up. We have two people supposed to come on Monday, didn't turn up. Two people come on Tuesday, didn't turn up. Wednesday day, Thursday? Yeah. I don't know. Two more people this morning. One didn't turn up and the other was half an hour late. So that's not going to happen. So if you want a job, I've got long term work. I've got loads of work on. I'll pay you from half past seven till three o'clock, but I will actually pay you till four o'clock as well. I've got seven days a week if you want it too. So if you're interested in a job, give us a buzz and get in touch and we'll hopefully see you on our team very shortly.